It's time for the Candlepin Challenge, produced by CNA in conjunction with the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back inside the Woburn Bowler Drome. John Holt with it. Dan Murphy, Bob Whitcomb made it two weeks in a row as champ last week. A great 3-11, but just a pin shy of John Zappi's season best at 3-12. That's right. 13 marks, seven of them strikes. Still leaves himself in second position, as you can see, behind uh, John Zappi, who is here watching. And, uh, of course, in third place, sitting on the bubble there is uh, Dan Gauthier. We'll see how good Bob can uh, be again today. We'll speak with him in just a second. But first, the challengers standing by with Trina. Hi, Trina. Hi, John. Thanks a lot. Today, our challengers are Skip Easterbrooks and Richie Bober. And Skip, I met your daughter, Mackenzie, just a few minutes ago, and she told me to ask you about your lucky pen. Yeah, we got, I got a lucky pen. She got it to me in Florida, and it's bringing me pretty good luck. So what's so lucky about it? Uh, I don't know. It's, she gave it to me, so it's, it just makes me uh, fall a little better. She said she got it at Disney World and she had to trade it. Yeah, she traded it for another pin that she had. Yeah, yep. So that's daughterly love and sacrifice, right? Oh, it certainly is. It <laughs> certainly is. So hopefully it'll bring you better luck than it did the last time you were on the show. Uh, I hope so. Yes, <laughs> I right. do. Well, we're happy to see you back again. And you have to Thank show you. everybody the pin. Kind of turn a little bit. There you go. So everybody can see it. Say hi, Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. <laughs> All right, and Richie, welcome back. You weren't on. You were on last season. This is your first time on this season. Correct. How many times did you roll off to get here? Um, actually, twice. I made it the second time I tried, so it wasn't too bad. Not too bad at all. And are you nervous, or do you feel like you've been here, done it before? Yeah, still a little nervous, but once we get going, and I'll be over it, you know. But right. We well, had a, a long drive out here. We appreciate you making the trip out from Adams. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Best of luck to both of you, gentlemen. Back over to you, John. Trina, thank you. With the champ, Bob Whitcomb, how important is that number one seat to you? I mean, anything could happen between now and the end of the year, and all three of you guys could get bumped out. But if you have the chance to get past John Zappi, be the number one seat, get that by, is that something you think about? Because you're a veteran of that final statement. Uh, not really. When I'm up there throwing during the, during the match, I'm just not really thinking about the score. I'm just trying to worry about my opponent and the pins down here. I really don't worry about the scores, and whatever happens, happens. If, it'd be great to finish first, no question about it, but... If I could stay second rest of the year, that'd be great and take my chances. Well, it's been fun to watch you. Close to 500 in your last three games combined. Good luck today. Awesome. Thank you. We're back with the Challengers match right after this on CNA. <laughs> Welcome back to Woburn for the Challengers match. Winner to meet Bob Whitcomb for the championship. Skip Easterbrooks and Richie Bober to the challengers today. Good up close and personal look at the competitors, and we're all set to go. Skip will go first. It's a one game, as usual, one game challengers match. The winner advances. Skip joining us from Plainville, Massachusetts. Skip's been with us a couple times, and he's yet to crack that challengers match. He's back with us uh, on June of uh, 05 and I met a guy named Det Klein and lost the debt in uh, 98 to 106 and then he uh, pulled Steve Reno the following year in June and lost 109-115 so let's get into that championship round. Posted eight in his first box. In a couple weeks, we'll be back with our youth bowling challenge. And then the adults will return after a run of four weeks. With the regulars, the next couple shows. See how far, far uh, Bob Whitcomb can take it. Two weeks in a row as champ and counting it bowling very impressively. Four horsemen to the right remain up for Skip Easterbrooks. Father of two, Kelsey and Mackenzie, each 14 and 10. They both are sitting in the front row down with the bowlers. His wife, Tina, is in the background. Oh, right here, right next to us. Now Richie in his first box. There's a look at Skip's daughters cheering on dad. Richie's been with us a 
several times. Well, he's got a seven and four win loss record with us. Some of the more memorable matches, um, both against Chris Sargent, hit 289 for two games. Chris Sargent's 213. Um, beat Kevin Scapone, 258, 248. Lost to Pete Iannuzzo uh, last February, 262, 226. Got a seven and four record with us. Not bad. Look at a 10 box to uh, open. Richie from uh, Adams, Massachusetts, western corner of the state. They're going to give him a nine instead, I believe. Whoa. They're all over our scorekeeper, <laughs> Smith. Cut him some slack, folks. <laughs> it's a nine instead for Richie. <laughs> Almost our first mark. Both of these bowlers qualifying out of Agawam Bowl, called the Springfield area. 18, two nines for Richie, early three pin advantage. Still looking for our first mark from these guys. Skip sporting the average of 127. Right up the middle, left with a spread eagle. Two, four, seven, three, six, ten. We'd like to go after the two, four, and seven. Clear those away. Looking at the three, six, and ten. Still no marks. Ten box up to 25. There's his wife, Tina. Come on. Always pick the wives out. See how she's nervous she is. It's one of those hands and. <laughs> All right, that'll go. Diamond leave. Three, five, six, and nine. Executive 10 boxes, skips at 35. Richie averaging a 123. Operating now in the third. Right through the middle. I'm beginning to think that Bob Whitcomb took all the marks out of, <laughs> of these two lanes the last two weeks. He has been tremendous. Yeah, we talked and you mentioned it at the end of last show. 494 is his last three games. The 183 against Gary Duffett and then 311 last week. My first edition was over 500. They said, no, 494. I said, oh, you're not that good then. Really. <laughs> Don't even talk to me yeah. to get 500. <laughs> Will Richie be the first to mark? Fourth box. Beginning to think neither one of them want to go up against Bob Whitcomb <laughs> after last week, but can't possibly keep that pace up. You think? <laughs> you wouldn't think so, but yeah. he has been real consistent. With the exception of a four box to start off last week. Yeah. <laughs> All his great bowling, and that's the thing people are going to remember. <laughs> That is a, a nine. Well, if you want close matches, you've got one. If you want one with a lot of marks, you out of luck so far. 35-34, just a one pin separating the bowlers. So we move to the fifth to make the turn. Skip right on the head pin, but two stay out. Yeah, the, wood, the farther out the wood comes, probably the better off he's gonna be. 
He could take the second piece. I don't know, I think I'd take them both. Yeah, right there. Oh, the seven remains. Six, seven sounds easier than it is. Gets that time, so three tens in a row to 45. After opening with an eight and a seven, he's been perfect so far with the, after that at the three consecutive 10 boxes, which could be the difference in this if no one marks. That third ball is so very important. This is no gimme either. He's going to have trouble with the 10 pin with the wood. It's going to deflect the ball. Let's see if he can get enough of that wood to carry the 10 pin. I'd almost go right at the 10 pin, put the wood on the right hand tip. Uh, left not only the 10, but the six as well. Here's a look at Bob Whitcomb waiting in the uh, wings. As he shoots for three weeks in a row. Easy to laugh when you're doing as well as he has been. <laughs> Triangle four, seven, and eight. Could this be our first mark? Good opportunity for Richie. By the four to take out the seven. Loses a pin and count. Opposite all those tens for Skip. I think maybe the first one gets a mark would be the winner in this match. Lane 36 for Richie in the sixth. Not an easy spare leave. Two, five, and eight, but have to come up high in that piece of wood, almost cap it, but buy it. Left the two. Every pin crucial. Again, opposite of 10. Gets a 10 of his own. So the lead remains at two pins for Skip. 55, 53. Four boxes remaining. Stay there, Wood. Well, he's got a chance with the wood on the left. Nine and ten up. Looks like the wood may pass in front of the nine and get the ten. He's going to have to have something come off the wall. Oh, got it. Got them both. First mark. It comes in the seventh. A spare for Skip Easterbrook. And this fill in a low scoring game like this is very key. Right oh, just three. All right, work it out, work it out. <laughs> Spread eagle plus the nine pin on the right hand side. Oh, pretty good effort. Leaves the 6 10. Nine to push his score to 77. How does Richie respond opposite a mark for the first time today? Sometimes that's all it takes. Once the other bowler gets a mark, then you come up and throw one or two yourself. Richie ho hopes that is true. It's not going to be an easy one. The five and ten. Wood stays right there, it would be nice. Still looks like it's out far enough. He could clip the wood next to the five pin though. 
matches the mark. Of course, now he's got to better that fill of three, which shouldn't be too difficult from Skip. Trails by five, so needs at least five. Anything over five, you'll take the lead. How about six? Diamond leave, three, five, six, and nine, trying to go two in a row. Not only set him up for bonus money, but take a big advantage going into the final two. Oh, it's gonna go down to the final two frames. <laughs> It's not that these balls are bowling badly either. Just not getting a lot to shoot at. So it's a one pin lead now for Richie at 78-77. Two boxes to go. Ten now, Skip. Good time for now. Nine of ten leaves the king. You only got one mark, you drop nine. That has to look like a pencil <laughs> without an eraser. Got it. Tina liking what she sees, hoping for more here in the tenth. Well, he's going to try to do the same thing he did last time hit the head pin with this ball. Unfortunately, it went right through the middle, but it's not going to happen every time. Light hit that time. Better action and a better pin drop. Three in the ten. Looks like the wood's set up nicely. He's on the red line or to the right. Could be two in a row. Yes. And he earns a bonus ball. And if you were to throw the strike, it would be $50 in bonus money, which would be twofold. He'd get the 50 bucks, but he would uh, really put the pressure on Rich Bober to follow suit his final two. All right, all right. Eight more, every bit important, pushes the score up to 113. Well, it's two marks for Rich Bober to catch him. Leading by one, he's facing 36 pins, so he needs 36 to tie, 37 pins to win. Oh, strike in the 10th, can't, uh, ninth. Can't start better than that. I said that wrong, 36 pins, 35 to tie, 36 to win. have to convert the four horsemen and the nine. Must make this spare. No. Can't do it. And Skip Easterbrooks is going to advance to take on Bob Whitcomb. Breaking through, getting past that barrier in the challenger's round for his first trip to the championship round. He will have some tough competition, though. <laughs> Skip is ecstatic. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Love that enthusiasm. Back with more right after this. Back at the Bowling Rome and ready to roll in the championship match. Skip Easterbrooks can't wipe that smile off his face. <laughs> Stay tuned, though. He's, he's got to take on Bob Whitcomb, and that can be a, a difficult assignment for the best of bowlers. The reigning champ to go first is... He efforts to make it three weeks in a row as champion. Joining us from Halifax, Massachusetts. Won't start with a four box this week. <laughs> Unless it gets shut out of the next two balls. At least a six this time around. Three eleven was Bob's two game total a week ago. The pin shy of the uh, best mark of the season, which still belongs to John Zappi at three twelve. Ten box for Bob. 
13 marks in those two games a week ago. Seven strikes, six spares. So Bob, uncharacteristically, uh, going to be open the first two. Relative slow start for him. 10 and a 7, 17. Skip a 113-103 winner over Richie Bober. That pin, the five pin was going down into that wood, swung around and stood it back up. Got the five eight piece of wood in between. No problem if he catches the five. Misses to the right. Had an early chance to mark. It's an opportunity he'll regret. Missing out on. Instead, it's a nine. Bowlers using lanes 35 and 36 here in Woburn. Drop of seven. Three, five, six. Bowlers open. Myself, along with Skip's wife, thought he should have had that one. <laughs> right. Couple nines and a one pin edge for Skip. It is John Zappi, Bob Whitcomb, and Dan Gothier, our top three at the moment. The top three come the end of the regular season, qualify for our final show and a chance to win five thousand dollars takes out that left side minus the seven with marks in 13 of 20 boxes a week ago and now three straight with them this week. He'll move to the fourth, 10, seven, and eight, totaling 25 so far. Coming up between games one and two of this championship match, our strike challenge, our audience participation segment where the jackpot has grown to a gaudy $600. Greg Orlando chasing that money this week. What a payday that would be for a member of the audience. That's coming up shortly. Four in a row open for Bob, wow. Greg Orlando, a, a regular in attendance here with his son and he will get a chance to go after that jackpot coming up. Five up, five down for Skip. Yeah, his son Chris is what our, is it? He's a producer to the producer. That's actually standing right behind us now. Oh, what a spare. So Skip gets the first mark coming in the third, much like he did in that challengers match, uh, breaking through for the first mark versus Richie Bober. Gets rid of the four horsemen, needs some help on the nine pin and gets it. Right 
follows with an eight pin fill. I think good things are going to come to Skip because he's been bowling very well. Even the first part of that challenges match, he didn't get a lot to shoot at. Was pinning well and finally started the pins to break up toward the end of the game. And now he's got two in a row here, looking for bonus money. He'll get that chance next time up. You know, at some point, though, the uh, drought of marks for Bob Whitcomb will end. <laughs> He's just too good for it not to. Eight go to remain. Six in the nine. You see Bob's high triple, 497. Well, if you make his last three games a triple, he's at 494 on this show. Sliding by the uh, six pen, got the nine. So he'll be open for the fifth consecutive uh, box. <laughs> 10, seven, eight, pair of nines, total of 43. It was 83 at this time last week. <laughs> well, 40 off that pace. There you go. With the real Bob Wickham, please stand up. <laughs> he does in the sixth. Come on, eight, nine, or ten. Come on, answer it. All of it. Skip looking for three in a row and bonus money, 50 bucks. All right. Four horsemen right plus the seven. Box, 61 at the halfway point. Leading by 18, but as you can see, he's faced it with a strike in the sixth box. Already put, put up our champ, Bob Whitcomb. Right. Takes out six. One, three, seven, ten. Seventy to fifty-three, and when we come back, Bob Whitcomb will fill his strike, He's trying to defend his championship here on Scenic. <laughs> Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage of the C and Eight Candlepin Challenge. It's an unusual leave. It looks a lot worse than it is, though, with a piece of wood in between. It's got to be on the two pin. Everything should sweep to the left, not to the right. I mean, whether or not it can carry a, a six and a ten remains to be seen. Needs a ten to not lose any in count here opposite Bob. It's a nine instead. The lead at seven pins for Skip through seven complete, 79 to 72. And nearly a strike. Nine pin and all kinds of wood out in front. I'd want to avoid the one closest to him. Thank you. 
Not a problem. Spare in the eighth for Skip. Three marks. All spares, three, four, and eight. Coming up in just a little bit, our strike challenge with Greg Orlando and 600 bucks up for grabs. Is Don here as well? <laughs> Let's talk. Two pin looking at our champ, Bob Whitcomb, trying to get his second mark of this game. Got it. He's got a strike in the sixth, now a spare in the ninth. And if you're Skip Easterbrook, you don't want Bob Whitcomb to heat up because no. he gets dangerous. Just four. Going to be over the century mark in this first game, but below his average, certainly. 103 for Bob. Important fill here in the ninth for Skip. More importantly, he's a nice fill in another couple marks. He could build him up, himself up a sizable lead going into that final game of the championship round. That's pretty big. Just the six remaining. Pushes the wood right back and gets it two in a row. Looking at bonus money potential too. Tina looking a bit more relaxed than she did in that challengers <laughs> match when the nerves were running high in a uh, low scoring but tight match with Richie Bober. Off target there, just four in his spare. Gives him 112 through nine though. 17 pin advantage. Seven and the nine left. So the challenger is ahead of the champ as we get set for game two, 121 to 103. But first, when we come back, the audience participation strike challenge right here on CNN. Hello and welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Chris Orlando and his dad, Greg. And Greg's going to be our bowler today. But Chris is our number one fan. Is that right? Oh, yes. We watch the show every weekend. We tape it every day. And he watches it repeatedly all during the week. So he's very excited today. I don't think you've missed a taping this year. No, we haven't missed one this year. And we made most of them last year as well. So he's, he really enjoys the show very much. Well, we love Chris as much as he loves us. Chris, how much do you like this show? A, a lot. A lot. And we are so glad to have you here every week. We love seeing your smiling face. All right, Dad, $600. All right. All right. Go get them. We'll give it a shot. Okay, Chris, you come with me. You know, we wish everybody good luck every week, but I think there's some extra sentiment here that, that uh, we'd like to see Greg get it done if he can. Here he goes. I'll have a chance at the spare for $50. Pretty good form by Craig, though. Now it's a dollar every pin. Total of six pins for Greg Orlando. Two of the good ones, along with his uh, son, Chris. Nice to have them with us on a weekly uh, basis. <laughs> Back now to the championship match and game two. 
with that guy, the challenger, Skip Easterbrook's in the lead by 18, no less, over Bob Whitcomb, 121 to 103. He will go first, looking to pull the upset. Certainly has to be considered that because Bob came in bowling so well. The 10 still up. Skip from Plainville, Massachusetts. Bob from Halifax, Mass. And a 10 box for Skip. Back in the <laughs> Next week on the show, Gary Carrington and Jeff Surrett. Two very good challengers. Jeff, of course, the reigning two-time champion of the Candlepin Challenge. He's won our top prize each of the last two seasons. He or Gary, either one will be stiff competition for whoever advances as the champ today. It was a little too low in that piece of wood, left the nine and the 10. So two open frames for our champ. Has he got anything left in the tank after the last couple weeks? Through a lot of marks, he's gonna need some. 210, Skip not leaving any pins up. Total of 20 early here, game two. Half Worcester right side, three in the nine. Nearly recover to get the mark. One thing's for sure, and Bob is going to grind all the way to the end. Better make sure that you got a big enough lead going off the last few frames. Second box now. Again, opposite at 10. Takes out seven, the three, six, ten left. The question is, can he get by that front piece of wood? If he can't, it's going to be a roadblock, I'm sure. He got by it, but missed the object pin, which was a three. Needs just want to keep pace. That's what he that wanted to do. Lead down to 18, 141, 123 now. Eight boxes to go. Skip takes out seven. Little six, nine, ten on the leave. Got it. Big mark from Skip in the third. And a big fill to follow. <laughs> fill of five. It looked better than that, hitting the head pin, but he leaves himself the two, four, seven, and the eight on the left hand side and the ten pin over in the far right-hand corner.
44 in this game through four. Bob now operating opposite the mark in the third. Leaves three. We always worry about the sleeper in the back, which is a nine, but with this wood to the right, it'll keep everything in play, help him with a nine pin in the back. And a quick observation on his delivery now. He looks like maybe a little bit tired. He's pulling up. He's not staying down with his shot. That time he did. Sometimes when you pull up, you pull the ball slightly to the left. Plenty of time to regroup, though. Refocus. They're directing traffic. The two and the ten. Piece of wood behind the two. Catch the two. The wood may direct that two pin into the ten. Yes, it yes. does. And Bob needed that to get back on track. Spare in the fourth. Come on, into back. As a look at that last spear, cuts the two pin. Actually, the wood took out the ten. Wow. That was a pretty good looking ball going into one three pocket. Leaves himself the five, nine, and ten. He'll shoot at the five, hopefully on slightly to the left of it, and cut it into the nine and ten. Try, good try. Double nines in a row for Skip. <laughs> Harry is now in box six, looking to dethrone the champ after the challenge match. We get our first Earl sighting in a couple weeks, back in his regular position as the scorekeeper and jack of all trades. There he is. <laughs> And again, they're spelling out their <laughs> favorite name in the crowd. <laughs> and he disappears behind the strike challenge sign. Well done by Skip to pick off that pin. Here's Bob, his fill now in the fifth. Leaves the goalposts, fill of eight. <laughs> uh, there he is, he's ready to go, he's ready to pounce. Surveying the sea, oh, gritting the teeth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh twice in a row. Someone's what gonna is hear about this. <laughs> Oh, and he's going to waste the trip. Is it rolling back? Pretty close. Oh, they had to take a high ball. Right? I need that job so I can slim down like he, <laughs> he is. I think I run down that many times. I know. I mean, when I they missed me, they didn't even know I was gone for four weeks. <laughs> Early, you know. Got to sign up. We had another Dan last week. Dan Larishell is going down there, but the consensus is he is no Earl. Not quite as graceful as the Earl. Not quite as comfortable in the spotlight either. No, no, no. 
in and out, you know? <laughs> Not a lot of fanfare. <laughs> Champ is struggling, folks. It's the hip in more this week than he has the last couple with that first ball. Still within striking distance, but Skip Best, Easterbrook has put up a mark in the sixth. Oh, and so does not our champ. He's got life in him after all, and we're gonna have a good finish, a tight, close one. Bob Whitcomb being <laughs> challenged, <laughs> still able to smile. The finish is next. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage of the C8 Candlepin Challenge. Got it. Terrific shot. Not an easy spare leave. Just to the right of the red line, just enough to clip that seven pin. Now we haven't seen a strike in the ch championship round at all. Someone is due. <laughs> the amazing Kreskin <laughs> seated to my left. Take a look at that strike. Did I call this? Yeah, I think I did. Okay, Skip, your turn. In the ninth, Skip's looking for his first strike. I'm sorry, that's the best I can do. Right One there, miracle wood. per tape. <laughs> he wants that wood to come out. He's got a chance now. Got a chance to deflect the ball off the wood. Then the wood take the seven. Got it. Terrific spare, a clutch spare. Up to 106, big ball coming up. Nine and a chance for another mark in bonus ball. Needless to say, this would be huge. Missed it. Ooh. Leaves the door open for the champ. Got it that time. 125, total of 246. Bob needs 40 more to surpass that 246. He's at 207, coming off a strike in the eighth. Three marks in a row, got him 50 bucks in the bonus money. He can make it four in a row here. It's all on the line, these final two boxes. Good finish this week. Needs a decent fill and at least one more mark. Fill of six on the first part of it at least. He'll get another ball. He needs to convert this and throw another mark in the tenth now. If not, he'll need a double strike in the tenth. Now he needs a double strike. Nine in the frame. Down by 22. Double strike four to tie, double strike five to win. <laughs> Not get it. And Skip Easterbrooks is going to be the new champ. Judge 
One more for Bob Whitcomb, but we celebrate a new champ this week. Actually, is off. I was off my math again. Uh, just I'm in the rut here, but he still needed a double strike. 233. 13 pin victory. 246, 233. We're back for the wrap up right after this. Back for the wrap up, Skip Easterbrooks, our new champ. That's right, good chance we'll see Bob in the final show. No doubt with that 311 two game total. That'll do it for this week. We'll see you next week on the Candlepin Challenge.